Menin idea tea. Peleadeo Achilleos Olumo Menin. Amuri Achaios Alge Etike. Polas di Ithimo Sukas. Aidi Proopsen Areron. Aloria Tecune Conesen Anoisi Tepasi. Rage. Sing, O goddess, O muse, the wrath of the son of Peleus Achilles. O murderous, O doomed one, who cost the Achaeans countless lives, hurling down to the house of death so many souls, leaving their bodies carin, feast for the dogs and birds. Analyze, read, and translate some of the most important texts from the ancient Greek times all the way to the early biblical and Roman era. Across all of these books, we have seen a universal theme, rage. This thing which encompasses us, forces us to tune in, turn to the tunnel vision and the red lens that covers it. Now, the rage we referred to back in the opening lines of the Iliad is that of Achilles. Achilles is an incredible warrior, an incredibly powerful figure of the Attic Greek times. He was at a place of stability and harmony at one point until his friend Patroclus lay dead on the battlefield, killed by another Trojan soldier, Hector. This launches him into a rage. He loses all rationality, something every single one of us in this room can all relate to. Now, this rage can be seen manifested all the way through to the Roman times of Virgil's Aeneid. In Virgil's Aeneid, we see in Book 4, a beautiful love affair and political affair between Queen Dido and Aeneas. The two are in love. They're at harmony, peace, and stability with each other. They have forged together a covenant between the two. However, Aeneas, when he lands port in Queen Dido's land of the Tyrans, he is forced to turn back and head back to the coast of Italy to find what would be one of the greatest nations in the world, Rome. Now, Dido and Aeneas' relationship swings between two extremes, infatuation and desertion. This leaves Dido in sorrow regret. She has moved from what was once a covenant, love, and stability into a sorrowful, fearing rage. Now, we can see that Dido takes actions into her own hands against Aeneas. She decides to take her own life. But before doing so, she builds a pyre, which she would ultimately end her life on. She looks at her people and says, This is my last cry. The last time my blood will boil. O Tyrans, besiege with hate. Aeneas and all of his race to come. Make this pact on my dust. No love no truce must come between us. Now, prior to Dido's exploration of her rage, she was in peace and stability with this love. It led her to this irrationality and to take justice in her own terms. After she takes her life, her rage is seen and heard and smelt across all of the lands, even as Aeneas leaves the port and heads to Italy. Now, what does this rage say about these characters? Well, to me, it seems to reveal something universal about our human condition and nature, something we can see in the crossovers and parallels when we turn on the news, have conversations with friends and family about what's going on, or simply are acted in accordance with this internal fury. Now, when I was trying to think of where this was coming from, the origin of rage, it didn't seem to be in one locomotive spot. In fact, it seemed what brought this rage about was love. Now, when we look at the Latin and theologian Lucretius, he depicts to us a beautiful story of Aphrodite and Mars. Aphrodite is the goddess of love, and he prays to her saying, only you can secure mankind with tranquil peace. It's true. Love is able to bring back the stability and the rest of Mars this warlord who is brutal, vengeful, and is brutal in his actions. The same God that is inherent in all of us when we too act in this way. 
the same God present in Achilles when he took his brutal force out on the battlefields of Troy. And the same God that is present in our minds as we look at the battlefields of our society. Now, when we think about this, we know that love brings this rage, but it can also succumb the powers of it, bring the stability to the Mars and to ourselves. It starts to prompt something about unity, stopping the forces of division that are byproducts of rage. Now, when we look at Plato's Symposium, it is a beautiful dialogue about love. Aristophanes tells us about the beginning of man. We were all once united, two beings and one, four legs, four arms, four eyes, two faces. This unity was so powerful that Zeus took this as a threat. He decided to divide the humans, leaving us with consequences of trying to find our other half for the rest of our lives driving force that division because the power of unity is within us all to succumb the rage that is the byproduct of these external forces causing internal conflict. Now, when I think about this too, I think back to my own grandmother. She is 80 years old, about 4'11", and is pure Italian. She can definitely become rageful and she can make my blood boil almost more than anyone else I know. But it is when I'm with her that I am reminded why I choose love in all of my own adventures. Because I could not imagine a world, a time, when the last time I get to see her, I was brought forth with rage and not love. Now, over the summer, I had an incredible experience with my sister. We got to go to Las Vegas to see Lady Gaga's residency. The show was awesome, electric, filled with love, you could say. But she left us with something very important. She said, the world is a rotting apple, slowly sitting on a desk. But the kinder we are to each other, the more love we can give, the slower that apple will rot. Now, there's a lot of truth in that. The world, ourselves, our own nature are decomposing. We are of material. We are given choices in these inherent moments to turn away from the internal rage that is within us. Rage is just as fundamental to our being as our bodies. We can choose what to do with this, to participate in the truest example of free will by going against our internal desire of rage and going against the nature of love. Now, before me, I have two apples. I got both of these about a week ago. On the left, this one I left sitting on my counter Dropped it a couple times. Oh, it's a little bit mushy, a little moldy, seems to be unedible. Now this one, I gave lots of love to it. I washed it off in my sink, put it in my fridge in the produce drawer, and checked on it every day. These two apples are not the same. Rage is a byproduct of us living in this universe, on this earth, in this world, in this time. All of us will be moved to act with rage at one point or another in our future. We hold the power to change the world and to pick our own apple. Now I ask you, what apple would you choose? Thank you. <laughs>